Hey, it's been a while since I've done one of these monthly favorites videos. I'm tucked up like right next to my window, so if I'm a little bit more yellow than usual, it's because the sun is beaming in. Um, but I'm here because the rest of my office is a mess. My husband and father-in-law built um, a bunch of white shelving for me for my closet. So I'm going to be organizing my stuff and putting it in there. But right now it is literally spread across the entire office floor. So I'm like hiding from it here in the corner filming this favorites video, although I should be really putting stuff away. Thus, I'm here. Let's get into the favorites. Um, I did a post uh, very recently. I will link to it in the blog post where this favorites video lives. So if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to go over to the blog post to find all the details. This mask by Clinique is a brightening moisture mask. And I've used moisture masks before. I've used charcoal masks. Like, for example, two of my favorite other masks are the Origins. Um, what's it officially called? The Overnight Mask to Quench Skin's Thirst. Um, so you can use this like a standard mask or you can leave it on for overnight. And then the charcoal mask to just clean out my pores and kind of the more... I don't know, the oily parts of my skin, but just the skins that are, the parts of my skin that's blemish prone. Anyway, the whole point of me explaining that is this mask is amazing. I, I, well, I was going to say I glue, but that doesn't make sense. I glowed. Is that the plural um, or past tense of glow? Who could ever know? It's not like there's a resource, like a dictionary type thing that I could reference, but it's, I'm too far gone. Uh, my skin looked glorious after using this mask. I'm addicted. Man, if they made like a day cream, a brightening, moisturizing day cream, I would buy it immediately. So you can check out the post to see the before, during, and then after I did my makeup with it, and you can profoundly tell a difference. And it's not like a glimmery, shimmery glow. It's My skin just looked like a baby's skin. It was hydrated, there weren't any dry areas, and it it looked like I was pregnant. I'm not pregnant, but it was that just beautiful glow. I, I was shocked after seeing the photos. Like, man, you can really tell a difference. So this mask has been an absolute favorite. While we're talking skincare, um, when I did the event with Origins in December, um, the employee there that was diagnosing my skin and explaining what products would be best for me asked if I used a toner, and I said no. Just sort of it's one extra step that I never thought for my skin was really necessary. My skin's really dry, and so I didn't think I needed it. But she suggested using the Origins Make a Difference Plus Rejuvenating Treatment Lotion. So I, what I do, and I've started using this pretty regular. I, you only need a tiny bit, so it looks like I haven't made a, different, a dent in it, but it's only been about a month or so. Um, so you apply it like you would a toner, uh, cleanse your skin, Put a little bit of this on a cotton pad. I use these square ones that I got at Sephora. And then just wipe it all over your skin. And it, it makes my skin feel cleaner. It's supposed to prep your skin for better absorption of whatever you're putting on it next. So whether that's a mask or a um, night cream or day cream, whatever you want to put on after it. It's just supposed to sort of prepare your skin to absorb that better. And I don't know if I can tell a difference in like, wow, that absorbed deeper. However, it does make my skin feel cleaner and it doesn't leave it like craving moisture like some toners can do. Some toners just, and, and they're supposed to, to a degree, really cleanse your skin and be a little bit, um, oh, do they reset the alkalinity of your skin? I can't remember. That's going back to my beauty school days. But it's supposed to sort of reset the pH of your skin to even it all out. So sometimes that means your skin feels a little bit drier than usual, but you always have to follow with a moisturizer. Um, anyway, I, I've, I've really liked it. I'm surprised at how much I've liked it. It is one more step. It's, it's probably the step I forget about the most in my night routine. I don't do it in the morning. Um, and I think you're supposed to do it twice a day or kind of whenever before you put on any moisturizer. Anyway, it's good. The last skincare item from Origins is the Dr. Andrew Wheel for Origins Mega Bright Dark Circle Minimizer. There's something I've spoken about the most on the blog, it's how dark my under eye circles are. This is sort of like the Origins Ginseng under eye cream. Um, it doesn't have like quite as luminous of a finish, but I use it at night. It's just a nice eye cream. I, I don't know if I can say like my dark circles are definitely brighter, but I think that's 
those products like the Clinique Dark Spot Corrector I've been using, those have to be used for so long before you really see a difference. So I like this for night eye cream. It's, like I said, it's, it's not as luminous as the ginseng, so if you like a little brightening help in the morning, I would use the ginseng under eye cream, but that one has been, I've been liking that for the evening. Okay, I wrote a post recently on switching to using a foundation brush. I'm just forcing myself to do it. I knew it was cleaner than using my fingers and that the coverage would be better, and I was blown away. It's like I'm, I've been living under a rock. I knew putting foundation on with a brush would be better. But I, th I think it was just one more step to me that I didn't want to mess with. I had to clean your brushes, and it just felt like, oh, I have to use a brush to apply my foundation. Like, let me just put it on. But I've decided, especially because my skin has been a little weird, I'm going to use a foundation brush. And I've been blown away at how well, how much better my foundation looks, how easy it is to do. It's sort of faster in a sense. And this little guy right here makes cleaning my brushes a literal breeze. This is the Japanesque Solid Brush Cleanser Gentle Goat Milk Cleansing Balm. I got this at Ulta. Um, I also got a rose water brush like a daily cleaning spray from Japanesque that I haven't tried yet. I don't know why. I think I forgot I bought it actually until I was talking about this right now. It's in my drawer right there, but I haven't used it on the brushes yet. And, and part of the reason is I usually take a Pond's makeup remover wipe and just wipe the brush back and forth on there. So I think that um, rose water brush cleaner would fill in for what I do with the Pond's wipe. Anyway, what you do with this is run your brushes under the water and then just swirl them around in this balm. It's, it's pretty firm but it'll suds up quite nice and you can watch the foundation left in your brush disappear it just disappears and then you rinse it under the sink and it's all gone and your brushes are like they are brand new I can't believe how clean it gets them in the past when I've used like a gentle baby shampoo or other things on my brushes I felt like I could never get them back to that totally fresh like white hairs on the end of the brush again like a stippling brush I could never get back to that. I can totally get back to that with this cleanser. It's really easy. I just open it up, rinse all the... There's like three bl brushes that I use with foundation and concealer pretty regularly. So what I've been doing that's been working for my skin is once a week doing a deep cleaning with this other than just the daily maintenance. It makes it so easy. And then I just lay them on the edge of the sink, let them dry. Done. And then it feels nice to use like a fresh brush. The next day. So if you use foundation brushes like I am now doing and you need a good brush cleaner, I would highly recommend using this one. Let's talk about makeup. I picked up the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Contour Contour and Highlight Palette in Light, also 813. This is it. Uh, it has the contour and the highlight. My complaint is that they're in the same exact square, so it's sometimes hard to keep your brush just on one end, especially I've been using a bigger brush with this, so it's not, it's more of like a subtle contour. The brush it comes with is awful. It is just junky plastic bristles. The shape is terrible. I think what the intention was is for you to just swipe it back and forth so you have highlight on one end of the brush and contour on the other, and then just do that against your cheek so it sort of does the action for you. It's just such a bad brush. If you get it, just throw that brush away. Use a better brush. I'm so surprised at how often I'm grabbing this palette during the week. Just to really, I wanted to really give it a good try before I recommended it. It's good. Sometimes drugstore contour shades, like I have a Pixie by Petra contour that's really good. But other than that, I find that they air on the orangey side, sort of like the bronzer side. What you want in a contour is no warmth, like whatsoever, because you want it to look like a shadow and not bronzer. This is no warmth whatsoever. Really good contour shade. The highlight is nice as well. It's a little bit more luminous than what I typically go to on an everyday. I actually think it sort of is similar to the Hourglass, what are they called? Luminating, ambient lighting powders. It's actually pretty similar. So if you wanted to try a contour shade and then you've always wondered what the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders would be, just grab this at the drugstore. I can't remember how much it is, but I'll include a link in the blog post. It's good. Don't use the brush. Don't use the brush.
just use the product. I ordered some Honest Beauty products and I like them. I really like them. I, I wouldn't say they are game changers for me, but I wanted to try them. I've gotten a lot of requests from readers to try it and give my opinion. I like them. What I got is the Honest Beauty Cream Blush in Truly Th Thrilling. Truly Thrilling. So here's that shade. It's a really nice pink. I'm wearing it today. It's pretty subtle. I went subtle with it because I knew I was going to wear sort of a bolder lipstick um, for this video. And then I also got the Honest Beauty Truly Kissable Lip Crayon in Sheer Petal Kiss. So this goes very nicely with that blush shade I used. I like them. I, would I order it again? Mm, no, but not for any specific reason. So if you've wondered about the makeup, I'm, I've been happy with it. The blush lasts all day, even though it's a cream blush. Sometimes people have the issue where it sort of wears off. This doesn't wear off. I've worn it a couple times prior to filming this. Um, and then the lipstick is nice as well. It's not as sheer as you would think because it says it's a sheer, sheer kissable lip balm, right? Lip crayon. Sheer. Truly kissable lip balm. Truly kissable lip crayon in sheer petal kiss. That's where the sheer comes in. It's not very sheer. It's not as um, opaque as a full-on lipstick. But you'll get quite a bit of color delivery from this lip crayon if you try that out. So Honest Beauty, honestly, I like it didn't blow me away. I didn't expect it to. It's good. I haven't tried any of the foundations. I did in fact order an eyeshadow, but it is way too warm for me, so I'm just going to return that. So since I didn't try it, I didn't really want to say anything about it. But um, I, I got one of the eyeshadow trios in Sable. I think it was Sable something, but I've already returned it. I didn't even, I opened it and thought, nope, those are going to look terrible. So I closed it, I didn't even touch the product and put it right away so I can return it. Um, another makeup item I've been surprisingly loving is the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Major Volume Mascara in 10. I got this as a sample size, clearly, in a Sephora order, and I like it. Sometimes the high-end mascaras that claim to have like major volume tend to be too heavy for my lashes, but this holds the curl actually quite well. So I haven't gotten the full size. I'm still working on the sample size. The sample size is pretty generous, so I think I'll be able to use this for quite a bit. It's a lot better than like the MAC sample size mascaras. Those are always, they skimp so hard on those MAC sample sizes. Um, but this has been a nice mascara. I, I also have been using and loving, I didn't grab it, the Benefit Roller Lash, which I hated like a year ago. I tried it and was like, this is absolute junk. And then I tried it again and was like, I, I don't know if I can live without it. <laughs> so I don't know what changed in the middle of that, but so I'll use roller lash and then put like a coat of this on at the end because this is a, it delivers a lot of product, but it adds nice definition without weighing your lashes down. So try it if you're looking for a new mascara. A mascara I also tried that is terrible that I had such high hopes for is the Rimmel London Super Volume and Curl Mascara 24 hour. Uh, it says, formula with built-in lash curling power, curls hold 24 hours, lashes stay volumized and defined, use alone or as a top coat. It's just terrible. It did not hold the curl, and having used Benefit Roller Lash, which does in fact really hold the curl, this just didn't. And I knew sort of what to expect from a product that claimed it hold, held curl. It also is really hard to get off. I think that's where the 24-hour factor comes in. So um, it did nothing for me. I couldn't, when I was taking it off, I thought, oh, I hate this. So then I used it another time as a top coat because it said you could do it either. And I still thought I did nothing for my lashes at all. So, epic fail. I've been working really hard on keeping my hair healthy, especially now that it's getting longer. And Kenra sent me their Revive Shampoo and Revive Conditioner Repair and Strengthen. Um, it's from their Platinum line. They just sent it to me to try. Um, with no strings attached. They didn't say talk about it, so I'm just telling you I tried it. So there are some Kenra products that I don't like. This is a good duo if you need to repair your hair. It's not overly softening like some products can be, like too buttery. Um, think Redken All Soft. Super buttery. 
Redken All Soft would be perfect for someone with such dry hair that you feel it and it's just like crispy. This is good for dry, distressed hair, colored hair, any hair that you feel needs some life put back into it, but it isn't going to leave a heavy, leftover, buttery, creamy residue like some deep conditioning type products can be. So this was good. I, I won't use it every day just because I like my normal. Man, I alternate so many different shampoos. Uh, how many do I have? Living Proof Full, Aquage Volumizing Shampoo, Pureology Volumizing, what is it? Pure Volume. I just, I change the shampoo depending on how long it's been since I've washed my hair and what I want um, my hair to do that day. Usually the conditioner I always default to is the Pureology Hydrate Conditioner. And I've just been using the Living Proof Restore Conditioner. So I took a pause from Restore and use this for a minute, um, just this conditioner with my other shampoos. Are you tracking with me? Anyway, really good duo. Winter equals dry, skin, hair, everything. If you need some revival, I would recommend looking into this duo. Speaking of dry hair, the John Frieda Frizzies Expert Finish Polishing Serum. This is a drugstore brand. It was fine. I wouldn't put it in a not favorite, don't buy it category, but it was a little bit heavy. It left a little bit of residue in my hair. So if your hair is really dry, just after talking about that with the Kenra shampoo, um, this isn't terrible. It isn't the kind of serum where I'm like, this is awesome, you gotta use it, your hair feels like a literal dream afterwards, because my hair felt a little bit heavy, but it was effective in smoothing out the dry areas of my hair. So right around the front here gets really dry, and in the back, it gets really dry. Um, so I made sure to concentrate a bit of this on those areas. I ran it through all of my hair, like, mm, I don't know, not even quite the midway, just mostly around my ends, but focused a little extra on the particularly dry areas, and it was fine. I don't think I'll grab for it very often because it was a little heavy, but it, it's something to look into. Drugstore brand, easy to get your hands on. I picked this up at Ulta. This, again, is the Expert Finish Polishing Serum. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about it. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this favorites video. It's good to be back in the swing of things. If you want to see links or more information about the products I mentioned, if you're watching this on YouTube, go over to the blog post. If you're watching this on the blog, then they're right there for you and easy to find. I will be back next month with another round of monthly favorites.